Hey guys, welcome back to MuscleMentor.net. I'm Brad Hall and this is Justin Harris. And we want to talk a little bit about uh, post-contest supplementation. And when I, when I talk about supplementation here, I mean recovering uh, recovering from any of the fat burners or things like that that you that you may or may not have been using. I mean, even even if you're a, a completely natural competitor, but you've been pushing caffeine pretty high, you know, and 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 uh, you've been you've been pushing your body hard for uh, 16 weeks with with cardio and maybe not sleeping so great and things like that. Your adrenals can take a beating, and the chances are uh, they have. So some of the a few of the things that I like to use, especially during, well, we've, we've talked about this before. Um, if you are using any type of fat burners, and whether it's caffeine or you know clen or, or ephedrine or any anything like that, you want to be tapering it down over the next the next couple of weeks. You don't want to just just cold turkey uh, take it out because you're going to rebound really really bad. So w without even thinking about the the rebounding type of stuff or what we really want to do is get your body back to normal. We want to get you back to homeostasis so you're producing your own <laughs> your own uh, uh, norepinephrine and all, yeah. all that type of stuff. So um, a couple of the things I really like and I'm not, I have no association with any of these companies. They don't pay me anything. If they want to, they can contact me. Um, but Humana Fort is a, a, a really great, a really great product that can help with uh, getting your, your hormones back in back in line. Um, another one is L-tyrosine, and, and that is dirt cheap. You can get it anywhere, and it's basically just a, a, a precursor uh, to dopamine and uh, the other <coughs> neurotrans neurotransmitters that are that are involved in um, uh, energy balance. Yeah, what happens like is L-tyrosine converts to L-dopa, which converts to dopamine, which converts to norepinephrine and epinephrine, and those are the adrenaline hormones mm -hmm. so you know if you don't if you don't have enough of it basically if your stores are depleted you can get the signal for it but nothing's gonna happen so L-tyrosine can help get those stores those stores back up to where they where they need to be um, and then the the last thing there was a product uh, and I, I, I'm pretty sure they still make it and it was actually recommended to me by uh, uh, dr. Scott Stevenson and a while back um, and it's called revamp and it just has a bunch of uh, it's a one of those not proprietary blends but there's there's a bunch of stuff in there that really that really helps with uh, uh, recovery especially from stimulants and I've used that a, a few times and you know I notice a, a really big difference so I apologize for not not going into too many details with that but I think the the, the big ones are uh, cutting stimulants down you know halving it over over the course of a couple weeks uh, start taking L-tyrosine if you haven't already. Humanifort is really great, and then and then some type of uh, 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 product. Like I said, I recommend that Revamp, um, and I'm sure you can get it on Amazon or something like that. But if you if you just if you wait if you don't give your body any help when you're when you're just uh, trying to come off of a, a contest diet or uh, heavy stimulant use. You're gonna you're gonna suffer for for quite a bit longer in my in my experience. Yeah, and you really you really do need to consider the post contest uh, portion of a contest diet just as much as you do the contest portion. You know, there's, there's always the joke that you know you, you get in shape, take 16 weeks to get in shape and 16 days to get out of shape. But there's a, a large portion of re, when you, you you're never you're not just doing one show. You know, it's not a, it's not a, a show in isolation. If you're if you want to be a competitive athlete, you're going to be doing future shows, and so it's all one long continuation. And so any fat you gain in the off season has to be lost in the next contest. And so any any damage you can minimize after the contest, you know, really makes real is really going to make a big difference because it, it's. It's so much easier to do damage than it is to undo the damage, and so it's. Uh, I, and I, I see it the worst with with women, particularly because, and it's not. It's not. I mean, there might be some so, some uh, psychological aspect to you know to binge eating and eating disorders that's more prevalent with women, but it's largely uh, you know physiological. There, some someone like me who might have a with hard training might have a metabolic rate on a, on a hard workout day of up, upwards of 5,000 calories, I can eat 3,000 calories that day and still be in a 2,000 calorie deficit. Where a, a, you know, a bikini or figure fitness competitor might not have a 2,000 calorie 
metabolic rate entirely. And so for them to do a 2000 calorie deficit, they'd have to eat nothing and, and train, you know, three times a day. And so they can't create that calorie deficit. So it's very, it's just much more difficult for them to, to lose the body fat. And also it, much more dramatically, it dr affects their body much more dramatically because even a 500 calorie day deficit to them is a, is a higher percentage of their metabolic, total metabolic rate than, than maybe a thousand calorie deficit for a male. Yes. And so, you know, and so what ends up happening, it's all, the, the reverse is true for them also, because then for me, I might have a, a peak metabolic rate of 4,500, 5,000 calories. So if I eat 6,000 calories while I'm gorging myself a few days after a contest, I'm only a thousand calories over my metabolic rate. Well, for a female, go, you know, they, they go out for one pizza dinner after the show and they're going to, they're going to put more than a thousand calories over their metabolic rate. And, and so that they, they can swing much more wildly. And so I, I, I hate terms like metabolic damage and stuff like that. It's not the metabolic damage. It's that they don't have the, they don't have the furnace to, to begin with. And so it's much more, it's important for everyone, but it's much more important for them to be, to have a good solid plan coming after, coming off after a contest of how they're not, how they're going to ease back into eating, how they're going to control their, their weight gain, how they're going to control their water retention, how they're going to control their emotional response to, to that weight gain, and then how they're going to minimize the, the effects of coming off of stimulants and fat burners right. and things like that. And I think that's that's even uh, more like compounded with women, just yeah. because um, even even if it's like I said, nothing nothing crazy or, or through the roof. If you've been dieting for any long period of time, your hormone those those adrenal hormones are going to be are going to be suppressed, and you know your your thyroid can be. Uh, suppressed depending on how long you've been in that that uh, and the things that yeah and the things that re-stimulate thyroid mm -hmm. levels you know carb, you know carb, eating carbohydrates mm -hmm. can promote you know uh, can, can can stimulate the thyroid a male can can eat much more carbohydrates to produce a, a bigger stimulation to reboost the thyroid without getting fat than a woman can so they mm -hmm. they're, they're just you know at a de I mean everyone's at a deficit but, yeah yeah so and it's uh, my I think the four to six weeks after a contest really dictates not only it, not only how well how good of an off season you're going to have it really plays an important role of how good of a contest prep you're going to have the next show you do very true where's the pizza <laughs>